Okay, so I came to this morning. I don't have time, but I came to this now with this ready to put the uh, the. Um, I wanted to really do a water change and clear out some of those, um, you know, the duckweed. Um, so I opened it with something that wasn't here this morning. This huge great big nest, much bigger than the nests done before when the blue gram is mated. So he's obviously made a nest and he's made it for a reason. So it would be kind of churlish of me to break that up. So it's about just, I had my finger on that um, thing, even lifted it slightly, thinking, and then what's that? Oh, it's a nest. So I stopped my fingers and the nest is still here. Um, and uh, it's a bubble nest, obviously, of a gourami. And um, one can only assume it's got eggs in it. Um, perhaps it's not a good idea to keep it open that much. What caused that to happen all of a sudden now? I think I know. I changed the temperature this morning. Because they've been here for a long time, they've been well fed, and they haven't done that for a long, long time. But I changed the temperature this morning. I twisted, I thought it was a bit, felt a bit cold to the touch, so I twisted the, the temperature knob round, and I think it was in the lower 20s. I haven't even looked for it is now, but yes, yeah, 27 now. So, uh, is it is that right? These are not very good for showing up, but I think, yeah, 27 is the one that's, that's showing the most. So, I think it's on 27 now, it was on about 22 before. So, uh that sudden change in temperatures made them randy, Crawford. So uh, the gent has obviously made that bubble nest. Where he is now, I have no idea because these are all females hanging around there underneath it. And I don't know whether any of them have already been taken up into it. But the gent himself has obviously got himself tired out. He's taken some relaxation somewhere else. This is not to be seen, but all I should have to do is just feed them, I think, as normal over this side, and and see whether I get any further ones. This is one of the ones which were spawned in here last time, and now it's a huge full-size one. In fact, it could be well mating with its own father, which is not ideal, not my idea of the, way to, the correct way to be fish, but I put... The be one of the best in there, one of the best in there, rather than sell them all, just so that I had one left. One or two left, in fact, I've got about three left, including the one which is unusual, which has got birth defect, which is still in the other tank. Um, but um, that's obviously a female. They also seem to be mainly females that I've got here, but uh, the male, the gent, he's made himself scarce at the moment. That's what it looks like from the underside. Obviously you can't see whether there are any eggs in it or not, or at least I don't know how to see whether there are any. Uh, they're very small anyway, as yeah, so they fry when they come out of small. So there you are. That's a surprise. And my conclusion from it is, if you're not getting your, um, your grammy spawning, in, in, or other fish are spawning for that matter, you need a trigger. Sometimes the trigger is bringing the temperature down or changing the water. In this case, the trigger appears to be to put the uh, to put the temperature up. Oh, here's the man. Here's the male. And nice and active he is too. So I expect there will be some spawning, and I expect that once again I can start to take from here over to the other tank. However, while I've got male paradise fish here growing up so that they don't share the fate there's two in there now this is one of them so they don't share the fate of the other one I put to the big females too soon and got bullied to death unfortunately yes. <sighs> one would like to be a fish keeper that never lost fish by stupid decisions however I don't think that's that's probably rare 
In fact, I don't know a fish keeper that hasn't um, lost fish through silly decisions that they get afterwards. But uh, that's, I suppose, that's one way in which you you learn. Um, if that's any consolation, maybe not to the fish, but uh, well, the next one will have a better chance. So this one will have a better chance than um, than the one that looked just like it that went with the big females not so long ago. So if I show you the size of the females in the other tank, you'll get an idea what I'm talking about. Here you'll see still in a comatose state, uh, if the cat will let me see anything, this poor blue Akara, who's been now months, but getting worse and worse, and now you see barely, barely able even to breathe, in that position now for days. But you know, I don't believe, some people say, well, euthanasia, but I don't believe that. Just having, he's just having a nice lie down, dreaming about the life that he's had. Nobody's bothering him. I took him out of the more active tank into this um, more peaceful tank. So nobody's biting him, nobody's bothering him. He's just having a sleep most of the day. And gradually, like you would for a person, no need to give euthanasia. I don't believe in it. Not for fish, not for people. And he's, but he's definitely, he's definitely on the way out. I mean, I've been trying to get him back to normal for months but uh, it's not really working is it so it's just deteriorating maybe he has cancer i thought it was a trim bladder dis dis disorder but it's worse than that really um so it's starting to look more like a kind of cancer so uh, maybe it's cancer with some bladder but i thought it was to do with the the fact that it happened at the same time that i put in a, a, a grasshopper but that could be that could be um coincidental because i would have reckoned anything done by a grasshopper would have healed by now either that other fish would have died by now but uh, this kind of gradual deterioration is what you get with a cancer situation so um that's probably what's going on there and the yeah this is the size of the females that i'm talking about Sorry, it's very algae, overgrown with algae. The tank, I didn't clean the algae recently because I just didn't want to cause any kind of upset to this one down here. It's not harmful or anything. And there we have a red ancestress that I've also bred from. But that, was the one, that wasn't a happy story because the snails, the clear Helena that I put in, didn't seem to uh, serve their purpose very well. Instead, they started to attack those those ancestresses but you can see there's another one of the female paradise fish very ready to breed and the and there's the other sister another female blue garami not very well colored with the body the chunk taken out of the bottom of the body other than that very very healthy fish other than that one particular strange aberration which i don't know whether it's genetic or physical so there you go there's the latest update